Hello, everybody, and welcome to the eighth episode of Tissues of the Day, a comedy show about queer culture and relationships. I'm your host, David, and my co-host is... Robert Mackay. And today's episode is about gender identity, and we are joined today by our very special guest, Cassidy Anhorn. Yay, Cassidy! Hey. Welcome, welcome. How are you feeling? I'm feeling good. I'm feeling ready to talk gender. Yes. Um, so you can follow Cassidy at Cassidy A on Instagram or Quesadilla. Um, she was explaining. <laughs> we established <laughs> earlier that was inaccurate. <laughs> Whatever you think it should be in your heart is what it should be at this point. Yes. And I can't get rid of it. I get tagged in so many things that aren't meant for me of everyone that really wants that Cassidy A handle. So Ooh. I got to mark my territory now. Yeah. Yeah, that's fair. I... <sighs> I think I might make a video at some point about like all the David Borjas in the world that are on social media and like what happens if you look up David Borja because it's like a very common name in South America. Um, Robert, have you ever <laughs> come across people with your exact name? You know what? I really didn't until I went to Scotland. And oh. you know, that's that's because like the majority of my life I felt like a generic white Canadian until I went to Scotland. I was like, oh, I do have heritage. And there was an actual knitting company called Robert Mackay. And back in university, I remember when I, we were like building our portfolio websites and everything. And I was like, oh, robertmackay.com is available. I should buy it. And I didn't. I held <laughs> off till the end of the year. And then that freaking knitting company bought it. So whenever somebody goes to what they think is my URL, it's a knitting company. <laughs> Aww. I, I don't think anyone is named Cassidy Anhorn except for me. Like, it's a weird name. But there's nice. lots of, like, I get invitations on Facebook for, like, Anhorn groups. And then it always is just, like, the tackiest, like, all those, like, you know, posts with the sweatshirts that are, like, I'm an Anhorn. Like, shut up. You know what I mean? <laughs> that you can, like, custom All the Anhorns are wearing sweaters. And they're, yeah. like, I'm an Anhorn. You're an Anhorn. Shut up. We're Anhorns. <laughs> Um, that's like, uh, that's like Miley Cyrus. I, f I feel like I heard once that Billy Ray Cyrus was like, I want a child whose name returns zero Google results. And so that's what he did. Uh, oh, <laughs> I guess wow. he just like kept checking if the names were popular at all and, and landed on Miley Cyrus of all names, which sounds so like there have to be like a hundred other Miley Cyruses, but I guess there well, wasn't. now there probably are. Yeah. 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 I named her after my favorite musician. My favorite girl in disguise, Miley Cyrus. I actually like Miley Cyrus. I do too. I yeah. went to her concert once and got like, I was like 20, I want to preface, and got so drunk that the um, arena it was at cut me off. What? <laughs> they were like, Whoa. no, we can't sell you any more beer. You have to stop. Huh. You got cut and off at a Miley Cyrus concert? At, at Rogers Arena, I did. Yeah. <laughs> oh, that's so oh. funny. And we are, we're the same age as Miley, aren't we? I think she's a year older than me. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So right. In, so yeah, that was right in the middle of her like, you know, public. Bangers. It was her bangers yeah, era yeah, where she intensity. was like crazy. Yeah. Yeah. Loved it. When she couldn't stop. She wouldn't stop. <laughs> <laughs> Things don't run her. They don't run we. <laughs> I feel like you're saying lyrics and I can't relate because oh. I'm old. <laughs> she's yeah. for every age. Oh, she, every age. You know. But Toddlers. yeah, no, she's totally transition to like less i don't know it's like less intense music but it's still fun it's still good yeah um so we're gonna Anyways. jump into our very first segment of the show this is our rapid fire questions cassidy okay. are you ready to be in the hot seat i'm ready okay so you can answer yes no or either or they're very simple questions okay and, Robert and i are gonna take turns asking mm. okay here we go ready for this country or city city Miley Cyrus or Billy Billy Irish Eilish. <laughs> oh my God, Miley Cyrus. I don't. I don't know Billy. I feel too old for Billy Eilish. I don't know anything except for that bad guy song. Um, slap or punch someone. Slap. Pie or cake. Cake. I hate pie. Mm. Are you a listener or a talker? Talker. Do you prefer a dance club or a pub? Now that I'm older, a pub. Vanilla or chocolate? Both. Oof. Probably chocolate. You have to pick one, yeah. Chocolate. N nights in, nights out. I'm going to say nights out now just because of quarantine. I want to go out. <laughs> um, what do you wish you could do more of? Comedy. 
Mm-hmm. Performing. Okay. Drama or comedy? Comedy. Uh, what's <laughs> what do you hope to get out of this this podcast? Um, socialization, please. Someone talk to me. <laughs> uh, one on one or a group of people? Group of people. Are you a backseat driver? Yes. <laughs> I get complaints. <laughs> Would you talk to your family about sex? Oh, no. I feel like they've mm. kind of talked to me about, like, my dad told me about going to a porn theater once or something, and I was like, what? <laughs> <laughs> That's an appropriate response. I have never reciprocated. <laughs> okay, okay, here's one then. Porn theater or live sex show? <laughs> um, I mean, without saying too much, technically, I have been... To a sex event. Oh. But I didn't participate. This is actually a really funny story. I don't know if we have time for this tangent. You can cut ah, it yeah, out. Yeah, do it. You can this cut it out yes. if you want because it, it involves a past guest, Jennifer Perrin. Oh my God. Had on the bum, bum, bum. Crossover, crossover. Crossover. <laughs> okay, so this was like a few years ago before I met my current girlfriend, Sasha. And we were at the Queer Prov holiday Christmas party. And we were all just having like a nice dinner. And then somehow someone told me that there was an event called Babe Bang happening that night. And it's like a a, like woman, cis, trans, like all inclusive sex party, basically. And I'm I don't know. I'd never been to one, but I was like, oh, I'm kind of curious. And then Jennifer Perrin was like, I'll go. And we had never really talked or hung out. Like I was very newly on Queer Brav. Like I didn't really know her that well, but I was like you know what, I'm in like a yes to anything mood right now. So we show up, she's wearing this like red Christmas sweater. I'm wearing like a turtleneck and we walk in, but it's like two in the morning at this part. So we get in and the person at the door is like, hey, you don't really, you can pay like half price because everyone's kind of like wrapping up and we're like, (laughs) okay. And so the two of us like walk in, but we walk right into the like BDSM room and are just seeing people being like electrocuted and flogged <laughs> and the two of us are just like okay and we're on like a turtleneck just like watching this. <laughs> you could have been more prudish uh, in that room. Exactly. I looked like I was like oh. but I mean I'm, and I'm not a prude with that kind of stuff. I think it was just like the fact that I'm with this person on my improv team that I don't really know and I'm like <laughs> so sober. I was like stone cold sober and then yes. we like um, walked through the house, really nice house. But then everyone was like tired. Like they had been having sex. They were all tired. So no one wanted anything. So I basically just like watched them. Be- like I didn't watch, but you know, I like saw some people have sex and then they, and then I couldn't even try to make a move or talk to anyone. Cause they were all like, we're going home. Yeah. <laughs> and so yeah, then we kind of hung around for like an hour and then we're like, well, this is weird. No one did anything. We just like sat in a corner at one point and just had a conversation and then we just like went home. <laughs> Please tell me <laughs> one of you was wearing like on your Christmas sweater, the like Christmas bell so that as you walk through these BDS <laughs> rooms, you're the like the person who's like, ding, 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 I think ding, Jennifer's ding. shirt had like some like Santa thing on it. Like, I don't know. Nice. <laughs> it was really, really funny. It was so just, funny. We felt yeah. so out of place yeah you hope it would at least say like ho 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 like have something (laughs) related (laughs) to the sex party but it was just nope it was a red and green sweater yeah yeah good times (laughs) that's awesome um so why don't we just transition into the um next segment for sure this is the uh just our long form discussion like i said at the top this is a chat about as i hit my microphone this is a chat about gender identity and uh, Cassidy, uh, before we even get into the deep questions, how do you identify? Um, right. I use she, her pronouns, and I am a, a cis woman, and I identify, I suppose, to be more specific, as a femme-ish lesbian slash queer person. Cool. Um, so I believe you're our first, like, strict lesbian on the show. Have you ever been? Have you ever been with a guy? You don't have to answer if you don't want. Um, I mean, let me see. Do I want to answer? Yeah, I don't really care. Um, I I haven't. Uh, I like kind of dated this guy for like two weeks in high school, and then he broke up with me because I only wanted to talk to him on Facebook Messenger, and I never okay. wanted to meet in real life. Aww. And then he broke up with me, and I was like, okay, like, and zero, I was not affected. Fine, I was whatever. like. 
that's cool, man. And then, yeah, I kind of never looked back after that. Nice. You're not alone. Nice. I, I mean, the first woman I would have possibly ever been with was the point at which I realized I needed to date men because the idea freaked me out so much. Yeah. Uh, so, like... <laughs> I might have slept with a woman, but it it was like, it was a night of inebriation. And so if it took that much to make me realize yeah. I to date men, you, you know. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That's fair. I mean, there really is something to those like horrible drunken nights where you like, you regret the evening, but you're like, I never want to do that again. Or I learned a very important lesson about myself, mm-hmm. you know? Um. So, all right, so our first deep question. Uh, What has been the biggest lesson for you in regards to gender identity, Cassidy? I think the biggest lesson for me is just like as a, I guess, lesbian queer woman, I thought that when I was like a teenager, I didn't have any sort of concept about what it meant to be that or what it looked like. And obviously now I know it looks like anything, anyone could be like, there's no look for it. But I seriously thought, in high school that all lesbians were super butch Mm. because I just had no and like this may sound stupid to like any younger people listening to this because they have so much representation and now representation on tv is all like mostly super femme which is also problematic and in the same Mm. way but Mm. um I actually had no concept that you could look however you wanted to so when I was kind of realizing I was gay in I would say like the 10th grade I was like but I have long hair and like I don't, you know, I I don't want to like wear cargo shorts because <laughs> also mm. the only lesbian I knew was my earth science teacher who wore cargo shorts and had like the spiky hair and like she was awesome. But <sighs> so I think the biggest lesson I learned is getting older and being like, oh, you can actually look like anything. And I've been through like a transformation. Like when you guys first met me, I think I had like my hair looked like Robert's. It was like so short. You're welcome. Right? And I was like, (laughs) no, it looked good. Like I looked cute, but it was like so short. And I dressed so much more. I don't want to say butch because I've never been butch, but like more, I want to say androgynous. Mm. And I was kind of, which was also legitimate, but I think I, as I get older, I'm more like, I just don't care as much. And I'm like, yeah, if I want to paint my nails and have long hair, that doesn't mean anything. Yeah. And Mm -hmm. yeah, Mm -hmm. I've just been more comfortable with like presenting how I want and not having to like perform into a role of like what society expects me to look like as a queer person to like, I, cause I feel like I'm just doing it so that like straight people can identify me as such. Cause I hate when I meet someone that's straight and they're like, you're gay. And it's like this like shocking thing to them Mm -hmm. that really annoys me. And I, but I also want to push back and be like, we can look like, absolutely anything we're everywhere (laughs) yeah yeah (laughs) can i pull on the point of androgyny Mm -hmm. i think that's a really interesting one um i feel that in my path my journey of learning about gender identity androgyny was the first exposure i had to the idea of something that wasn't man woman you know that Mm -hmm. there was like there was a spectrum and this was before i even like knew that a spectrum existed and i in part of my sexual uh unveiling discovery of myself um had the recent one or like the first one (laughs) (laughs) yeah name it there's dozens uh no just kind of like those teen years going into college years um I had, it was things that were androgynous or bordering on the masculine side, but was always a woman who had masculine quality. So it would kind of put her into a bit of an androgynous category was my first real exposure to the idea that gender identity could be more fluid and more flexible. And so I always found people like Tilda Swinton and um, I'm forgetting her name now, lead singer from Garbage, which is uh, Manson. Her last name is Manson. I'm forgetting first name now. Uh, I'll look it up. Shirley Manson. Ooh, nice. Shirley Manson okay. uh, were so attractive to me. And I realized later in life that it was because they had masculine qualities. But mm-hmm. what I found interesting about them or what drew me to them is that they're like, you sit in this space that I don't know. And I haven't explored yet myself. And it wasn't until way later in life that I started really embracing more of my spectrum of femininity versus masculinity. Yeah. Yeah. That's awesome. Um, I'm going to grab working... my power while you chat about that. <laughs> my computer's dying. <laughs> Oh, is it? Oh, yeah, no worries. Um, 
yeah, I'm doing some research for an essay that I'm writing for fun at the moment. And it uh, landed me on Harry Styles. Oh, I love and Harry he, Styles. Yeah, I, I really like him too. Um, and he refuses to talk about his sexuality publicly. Um, and I think that's awesome. Uh, because like, I don't know, there was one article, I think it was by People or something. So I don't know how reputable it is, but they were just like, he, uh, he said, I feel like it's more interesting to my fans if I don't make a definitive statement about it. And I'm <laughs> it like, is. ooh, that's very good PR. <laughs> it is. I'm interested. But I love that. I love that he can just like throw on a dress and be like, what of it? Yeah. And I think exactly. for myself too, it's like, I'm I'm not even sure that I won't ever go back into that androgynous zone too. I think it's kind of fun to be like, right now I'm being kind of femme and like maybe in a year I'm going to like shave my head and like wear suits every day. Like, I don't know. Yeah. Yeah. That was kind of what I was thinking about as I reflected on this question as well, where it was just like, yeah, really like just have fun. Like there's really no reason not to have fun. Like if it feels good and like if it's safe and all of this stuff, like, you know, you know, when you're having fun, like it's a thing in your gut, right? <laughs> where you like stop giving so much of a shit about like what other people say, like you should be doing with your life or yeah, all that society stuff we were talking about. Um, awesome. Our next yeah. deep question is, uh, well, I mean, we touched on it, but like, how would you define your gender identity? Um, so I'm trying to think, cause I think we said before, uh, when we were prepping for this episode, we didn't necessarily want to touch on like gender queerness or, um, like trans identity as much. Yeah. Um, but so maybe, maybe we could talk about just like, I guess how, yeah, this is maybe a new question. This is uncharted territory, <laughs> but like, how has it felt lately um, hearing more about people who are genderqueer, two-spirit, trans, or whatever, and then sort of learning for yourself that like, oh, I am cisgendered. Like, I cannot relate to their experience. Can you say anything about that? Um, yeah, I mean, these people have always existed. And I think that we're also, speaking on my own experience, I feel like we're also ignorant about it before. Like, of course, there's going to be people that don't fall in this, like, area. Like, of course. And the fact that people are just now, like, trying to, I don't know, wrap their heads around it, it seems like it took us a weird amount of time as a society to do this. Right? Yeah. Isn't, and, and, and it's interesting to me, too, because when I really started diving into the subject matter, and I would say is in the last five so years... Um, and I was doing some research and watching some documentaries and films and that. I watched something back way back in the days of the Stonewall riots and <laughs> some of the demonstrations that happened around there. And, you know, the person who threw the first brick was a trans woman. And uh, there was like the subject matter was back then and was like and it's only now that we're really starting to talk about it, learn about it, educate on it and accept it. But it's been around since then and even before then. But that was just the period I was learning about. And so it just blew my mind that it's like this battle has been fought just as long as the queer community in general from a sexual orientation perspective. But for gender identity acceptance, um, it, that battle has been fought very long. And some of the greatest affronts that they encountered as a community was within their own greater community of being queer, you know? And, and it's sad because like, we talk a lot about the oppression we feel from more the heteronormative world, but the queer community, we're tough on each other. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Definitely. Yeah. Yeah. Say, say their names. It's Marsha P. Johnson and Sylvia Rivera. If you yes. ever want to watch a great documentary, it's called the life and death of Marsha P. Johnson. And it's basically about an indigenous woman trying to find some sort of justice and recognition for all the work that Marsha P. Johnson did um, way back and trying to find uh, something similar for Sylvia Rivera, who I think was alive at the time of filming or something like that. And, you know, like literally queer rights are built on the backs of trans women of color. <laughs> um, and so this idea, like there's a lot of, uh, like it's complicated in that the LGBT acronym is like three descriptions of sexuality and one description of gender identity. Um, and so, I mean, it is what it is, right? <laughs> like we, we deal with um, civil rights as it relates to sexuality, like who people can get married to and all of that stuff. Um, and gender identity has kind of become like a separate issue when really like we can't 
forget everything that trans people have done for us as well as um you know continue to speak out on their behalf like for all the rights that they deserve and all of that stuff i mean like it sounds so obvious but like for anyone who doesn't know like do some research on this stuff you know um, i think it's only obvious though for the people that actually are compassionate towards that and like care yeah. to learn because there's so many people that are just like they won't even try to learn it's very true yeah i have had i'm telling you probably 20, 30, like 40 hours of conversation with my older brother about, um, about He's transness. recording them. He actually has a long um, book. He's put <laughs> hours down. Yeah, exactly. Dear diary. Yeah. Spoke to my brother today. De <laughs> December 2016. <laughs> had another talk with Christopher today. It is um, raining outside. And... <laughs> What has really been wild about those conversations is just watching his slow acceptance of the reality of transness and how like, you know, all the classic arguments, like it's not a mental illness. They're not trying to trap people. They're not like trying to, you know, dominate people in sports. Like we've gone through every stereotypical like conservative argument um, and it's taken a lot of time yeah. uh, and slowly but surely i'm and like i started these conversations in 2017 telling him like i listen to trans people i don't know what to tell you man <laughs> like look up these other like google is free um trans people are out there they're writing about their experience and it's hard to hate up close and i just say these things over and Ooh, over good and over line again. write it down yeah. write it down yeah yeah um I, I think a lot of the time though it does take and this is for all types of like trans queer lesbian gay whatever Mm -hmm. For some people that aren't within that community or have any proximity, it really does take them knowing someone personally right. for them to make any sort of change in their ideology and how they think about it. Like I have family members that were straight up homophobic. And then after learning that, I, like not in my immediate family, like kind of like aunts and uncles that like, I don't really see that much. Mm. But then, you know, I think after like knowing that, I'm gay or whatever, they've definitely softened and like it just it takes knowing someone personally, which is so stupid. It's like, why does it take that? It's like that argument with mm -hmm. men that are like, well, oh, like women shouldn't wear that. And then it's like, what if your daughter or mother or sister was raped and then they're just like, didn't think about it like that. If it's someone I know, oh my God, that's crazy. And it like takes yeah. like that and you're like, why does it have to be like someone that you know for it to be bad? Like that's crazy. I, yeah. And let's highlight the fact that we're talking to three queer individuals here. And so obviously, like, we we have a different perspective. Like, I think of this almost like in the world of, you know, or the path of life where you're learning. It's almost like walking down this hall and there's these series of doors that represent the various topics. And I think as, like, queer people, we, we enter into a lot more of these topics, right? We at, at least open the door and talk about it a little bit. We may not actually enter into that room, but we at least open it along. Whereas I think a lot of people who don't have the impetus opportunity to do so, they'll just keep on walking. They'll walk right past that door. And for me, it kind of represents the fact that I'm like, because I at least have the door open, you know, because I've talked trans people or I've heard the term trans or something like that I had at least more inclination to go into that room whereas yeah. like where you talk to some people who haven't even opened the door well they're just like well I don't I don't want to put in the energy to turn that knob and pull that door and go in you know <laughs> like it, it is a like extra level of effort for them and my example um was sort of God, this is weird. Like, my parents um, is like, you know, I was lucky, very liberal. I had a good coming out, um, but they weren't exposed to this sort of subject matter. And I remember one Christmas, it was, um, there was a visitor who was going to come over. And my mom said, she's like, you know, this, this person is visiting. It's my friend's daughter. And she identifies with they, them. So, you know, like, make sure to use it. And I was like, oh, okay, fine. It was just like nothing to me. But then there was something that was said that I was like, uh-oh, <laughs> red flag. My mom was like, I don't totally understand. I was like, oh, no, here we go. <laughs> it's like, yeah. She's yeah, like, she was just like, goes. she's like, I understand how people need to love who they want to love and, and sleep with them. She's like, I don't understand why people are play, you know, like playing with or choosing to change you know, who they are and things like that. And I was like, Ugh. I was like, all right, this cannot be an awkward Christmas dinner like many of our other Christmas dinners. I'm going to sit down and I took like, it was my dad, my mom and my uncle and did like just a 20 minute rundown 
of sort of, you know, the separation between sexual orientation and gender identity. And just that little conversation, like, opened up a door for them. And they're like, oh, because they really just didn't see this segmentation between the two. And they didn't understand it. Yeah, I was actually talking with my masseuse about this because they use they, them pronouns. And um, they're really great. And we were talking about, uh, like, pronouns and pronoun usage. And we are just like, you know, if you have a dog and someone misgenders your dog, straight people are like, that's a she. Like, if you say, like, he, you know, they get so mad about, like, if you misgender their dog. And it's like, if you can learn all these dogs, quote unquote, genders, then you can respect, like, a human's pronouns. That's so interesting. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's, so it's clearly just, like, a stubbornness of, like, that. It's nothing to do with the fact that they can't possibly learn to use a different pronoun. Yeah. Yeah, huh. that's so funny. That's a good one. Yeah, that's I don't know one. what's going on there <laughs> for the people yeah, who I don't like, know what the hell is going on there. <laughs> right? <laughs> for the people okay. who are adamant about their dog <laughs> being correct and then uh, they're like, yeah. yeah, but you know, people, they're just, <laughs> they're disposable. Like, it's like, what? Babies. <laughs> what? Babies. It's a baby. It doesn't need a gender. It's a freaking baby. Like, I hate when you see those little kids and it's like future like holy like i don't know it's like really gendered like he's a flirt or whatever on like a baby and you're like i hate that so much no i have no idea how much of a flirt he or they will become god i saw i saw the grossest i mean because you know over the end the grossest baby um (laughs) it was horrid it was a troll it had wings webbed feet a duck bill yeah um, it had a Make America Great Again sh- uh, oh, God, <laughs> hat on. <laughs> and this was in 2021. I was like, this baby's so gross. This baby's <laughs> so behind. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no. I saw a uh, life this sign. was in the late summer when there was uh, a wildfire related to a gender reveal party, oh, like that God, whole nonsense. Yeah. Um, and then a couple months after, close to Christmas, there was this straight couple who said like, they had a shirt that said like, um, I, uh, the lady, the, the woman's shirt said, um, shoot, I'm gonna butcher it. She's like, I cooked the turkey. And then the guy's shirt said, I brought the um, the stuffing or something like that. Mm-hmm. And it was what? so gross because the lady was pregnant. Um, oh, I hate that. So she's like, oh, that sounds like a weird, gross metaphor for her being a turkey. Exactly. You can tell that they're going to have this like photo shoot once the baby is born and it's going to be like her dressed up as a turkey and like him as a thing, as a baster or something. Oh and like it's going to be yeah. some weird thing maybe they were into some weird like sexual cosplay thing where she yeah. was like on the bed on a platter with like gobble, the, little, gobble. <laughs> yeah. the, the little chef hat things on her feet and she was in like a turkey form and she's like come baste me good exactly <laughs> just so oh, hey you guys yeah. we shouldn't kink shame okay <laughs> oh no i know i, I want to i, I want to see this video <laughs> um so um, our last sort of uh deep mm-hmm. question um, which we kind of touched on of just what more could be done to educate people on gender identity. Any thoughts? You know, maybe if in high school it wasn't just like put a condom on a banana, that would be yeah. great. I don't know what it is like nowadays, but like literally when I was in high school, it was put a condom on a banana and then they gave us flavored condoms that everyone started licking the condoms and it was like a whole thing. Yeah. And that was yeah. sex Wait, education. they started licking the condoms? Yes, because they gave us the, fl- like, who who bought these condoms? They gave us the flavored Oof. ones. Oof. I didn't because I was kind of, like, very prepubescent in, like, what's going on. Uh, yeah. But, yeah, it was, like, a whole thing. And then I don't remember learning anything more than that. I think they were like, you're going to get your period. And, like, that was kind of sex. <laughs> that was the class. You walked in 10 <laughs> seconds. I'm like, you're going to get your period. Now get out. You're going to get your period. <laughs> get out of here. Yeah. Go get it already. Yeah. <laughs> Gosh. You're light, go get it. <laughs> yeah, yes. well, I mean, that's really true, right? It's like sex education, from what I remember in my school, the little bit that I remember, um, was <laughs> heterosex education. <laughs> like, there's nothing else covered. Mm-hmm. Um, and it's tough because if it comes from the public school system, that means it has to be legislated. Like, it's really hard to get that stuff made more progressive because it becomes politicized. Um, yeah. So it's just annoying, <laughs> but yeah. the internet's free. I hope, I hope kids, it yeah. seems like there was this recent stat. 
um, where like Gen Z, Gen Z are just saying like one in six of them identify in so in some sort of like queer manner, like some sort of non-conforming way. Great. And that's great. That makes me really happy. Yeah. And that's where I think one of the advantages of the internet comes in, right? That availability of information and connection to community is something that we never had or like we had the beginnings of and it was dial up it was AOL and it was like Napster you know like that's <laughs> or at least for me I'm a little bit older but um yeah I think back to my sexual education in school and it was very yeah heteronormative in fact I remember watching like movies and various media and that and how the big joke about like sex ed was always like it's lame and it's dated and it's always really uncomfortable for everyone and I was like oh that's not gonna be what it's like for me and then it happened in my school and it was exactly that I remember it was grade seven I think and we had you know everyone piled into this one classroom and the teacher awkwardly had to introduce the subject matter and then put on a video and we're talking a 1970s animated like uh oh. singing song like um sexual orientation not even sexual orientation sorry no it was just like sex ed and I still yeah. remember to this date this like one little snippet where there's this little like white guy uh, a little like blob character thing and the song was changes keep falling like sunshine and rain and he had penises raining on him and yes! he grabbed one <laughs> and put it on and then he was like <laughs> dancing and then there was a little bit on STIs like how they basically just said like oh you get diseases from uh you know touching people or like sexual contact and I was a fucking like class clown in the elementary years. And so Robert, the back of the class, blurts out, be like, oh no, Mr. Teddy has AIDS. <laughs> because like I had learned about AIDS and I oh, connected no. it to like sexual contact. So I was like, let's be funny and be like, I <laughs> like I did things to my teddy bear. And so then of course I got in trouble for it. And yeah. Dumb, dumb kid. I, I remember, like, in the, so, like, I had the, like, formal, like, here's a condom, put it on this thing in, like, high school, so I was, like, eighth grade, but in the seventh grade, we, in elementary school, we started to do sex ed, but they, like, wouldn't hire a sex ed teacher, so it was just, like, the two seventh grade classes, there was two, so it was, like, whoever wasn't your primary teacher had to teach you sex ed, so we just, like, swapped teachers for that, because it would be too awkward for your normal teacher to tell you about sex, and then I remember it was just this woman that just, like, had no training in this and so her sex ed was like okay ask me questions and put them in this bowl and i'll just read out the questions so of course they're all like joke questions like mm. and it was so uncomfortable and i remember someone asked her to describe an orgasm and i just remember sitting there and having her being like um it's kind of like a sneeze but better <laughs> like, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> suddenly everyone went home that night and just stuffing pepper up their nose yeah yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah and we're all just like sitting there like so mortified oh, oh god. god you know yeah. a piece that i would say i have used it many times that i think would really help sexual gender education is the gender bred person yes look up this little diagram it's an amazing it's like there's multiple versions of it but it's essentially a diagram that break down the fact like stuff and i've only learned about this stuff again learning through my trans friends of the trans community in the last five years the breakdown of gender identity versus sexual orientation versus gender expression and the fact that within like the um uh, attraction part there's romantic attraction and sexual attraction and it made so much sense it suddenly explained why you can have people who like i am sexually attracted to men and women but i only want to have romantic relationships with men or women and or it's like i'm a you know cis straight man who's attracted to women and sexually attracted to women but i love to gender express feminine you know like it, like all the elements were there and it suddenly is like now this makes sense because it uh, explains all the uh, various mashups of people in the world mm -hmm. and i think that alone would help kids in the education system better understand the fact that there's like there is gender identity there is sexual totally. orientation and you can have a blend of them and there's a spectrum within each yeah, yeah. I, I, I saw that in first year university, but it was taught to us by my, I was in like the queer club there and then they brought it up and I was like, oh yeah, this is so great. Why isn't like everyone seeing this? Yeah. But I am happy for, I don't know if to say Gen Z or Gen Z because I'm in Canada, but yeah. <laughs> Gen Z, I don't know. Um, 
they have like, you know, TikTok. I am not on TikTok, but I feel like it's so educational for them in that perspective. And then, like I said earlier, how a lot of the times for some people, it just takes them having like a personal connection to something or someone for them to finally understand that it's normal and whatever. And so I feel like that could help. You know, you can see someone's life on social media to an extent and to see yeah. that and see all these people representing themselves in different ways. Mm. Yeah, hopeful. 100%. I debate. Um, I mean, I'm on TikTok every once in a while and I debate whether I want to do more posts like this. But on there, there was some, you know, teenager who was maybe like between the age of like 14 and 16. And it just sort of showed up randomly. And he just had a bunch of questions related to like tops and bottoms and masculinity and femininity mm -hmm. and all this stuff. And I was just like, do is is it appropriate for me to say anything about this? <laughs> um, and I sort of resolved to myself. I was like. I'm, I'm going to do it. I'm going to give it a try. I'm going to try to be respectful and like professional and all of this stuff and not be creepy because I didn't want to come off as creepy. Um, and yeah, basically just like laid out a whole bunch of answers to these questions he was worrying about because it's all the typical, you know, self exploration and identity questions teenagers have, but like through that queer lens. Um, and uh, then he responded and he was like, this is so helpful. Thank you. Aww. And I was like, oh, <gasps> Yes, like so I just felt sweet. so like accomplished for, you know, not weirding out this kid and hopefully giving him some perspective like 10 years or 12 years older than he is. Um, so that was super fun. So uh, we are now sort of getting close to wrapping up the show with uh, with our game, with the fun of the show. Yay. Uh, so we wanted to play uh, an improvised game called Foley Artist, which we did with Renee in the past. Um, Cassidy is an improviser and stand-up comedian, so I'm sure she'll have plenty of fun. Um, now, the way we were thinking of doing this is Robert and I can do a scene and Cassidy can provide sound effects, unless by any chance Cassidy wants to be in a scene. What do you think? I'm fine with either. Okay, cool. I can do whatever. Okay, cool. Then would you kindly do sound effects for us? I can do sound effects. Okay, so you are welcome to use any objects. You can use your mouth. You can use, I don't know, anything, really anything. <laughs> that generates noise, vibration. In the air. Yeah, to make these sounds. Um, yeah, and we're just gonna we're just gonna go for it. Do so, you need a topic for? Yes, for yes. It. Would you would you kindly um, any any random word any random word that comes to apple? Mind. Apple. Okay. This is Foley Artist, inspired by <laughs> Apple, in three, two, one. <laughs> what you chopping Tim down there? Burr! Wow. I'm sick of seeing this apple tree in our in our uh, farm, Timothy. Wow, Jimmy, you chopped down the old apple tree. That yep. was Grandpa's favorite. He's going to be sure mad. Well, that's his problem, and he's dead. <gasps> we were supposed to keep that thing in his honor. What are you doing, Jimmy? Everyone it's the time neighbor... to, It's time to let bygones be bygones, Timothy. We can't keep... Just keep this ugly ass tree in the yard. Oh no, there's somebody under the tree in the drowning. Oh my God, oh my God. Oh, Timothy, Timothy, Ryan. help me, help Ryan. me. Oh my God. Let's push the tree. <laughs> it's Marshall, the little boy from across the street. Marshall, why are you standing under the tree? Didn't you hear me yell timber? <coughs> He Marshall? can't speak. Marshall? We've crushed his windpipe. Oh, oh no. He's gone into a high-pitched whine. That means he's close to death. Ah, uh, do, do you know CPR, Timothy? Uh, I learned a little something on uh, our first CPR class back in, in the grade schools. Do it, do it, do it. Try All something. Right. We're losing him. One, two, Boop -boom. three. Boop -boom. Boop -boom. I hear a beat. I hear a beat. Boop -boom. Boop -boom. It, sound, it sounds like his heart. Oh gosh, okay. It's getting faster. It's getting faster. Oh no! I think I pushed too hard! Oh, no. oh Marshall! 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 
First we lose Grandpa, then we lose Marshall. We- I- What was I thinking? Cutting down this tree only brings misfortune to us. Jimmy, it's the curse. It's the curse of the tree. It's Grandpa coming back to wreak his havoc. <gasps> Listen, uh -oh. in the wind. Do you hear uh -oh. it? Do you hear it, Jimmy? Uh-huh. It's the winds of Grandpa. Oh. Oh my. I'm it's... old. Oh my. Oh, it smells just like him. Oh yes, no. Yes, balls and Jimmy Bean. It was the dog. Oh, and he <sighs> always blamed the dog. Do you remember that, Jimmy? I always Classic blamed Grandpa. it on Rover. <laughs> Grandpa. Grandpa, is is Marshall floating up to the great beyond? Can we have him back? I need someone to tell my stories to. What's your story? So tell us anything, Grandpa. We, we, we're sorry about the tree. Like that one time, I thought I found a penny in my belly button, but it was just lint. Oh, oh he was always Grandpa. looking for pennies. Always looking for pennies. He really, he really was. Marshall, Frugal. I think you owe an apology to Grandpa. Marshall? Oh, sorry, Jimmy. I'm just mm. a little emotional. Well, Grandpa, I can't put the tree back together, but I can start taking note of all your stories. Please write them down word for word. I will. Especially the one about the time I thought I saw a goose but it was just a piece of dust that got in my eyeball. Do you remember that one, Jimmy? I'm gonna leave you to tell that story. It was a humdinger. I'll tell it. I'll get started on publishing now. Oh, thank you, Damn. Grandpa. Thank you for reminding us of the old ways. And Jimmy went on to be a best-selling author. <laughs> Scene. <laughs> <laughs> Sweet. Well. This was super fun. Um, it was super fun. Definitely could have gone for hours. I always feel that way. <laughs> it <They laughs> yeah. goes so quick. It's and true. it's so um, funny because it goes to show like the difference you get with a uh, an improviser. Like I can I can know your skills. Not to knock Renee. Sorry, Renee. That um, she was amazing as a foley artist. But like, there's certain skill sets you get from an improviser where they pick up on little things. So good. Oh yeah, for sure. Um, so. That brings us to the end of today's show. Cassidy Anhorn, do you mm -hmm. have anything you wanted to take away from today's conversation? Ooh, I wanted to take away just that we're never done learning. I think that's a big thing. We can say, mm -hmm. oh, because we're queer, whatever, we're like knowledgeable about these topics, but it's kind of never ending. And we need to keep putting in the effort, especially as people that are cis, well, I identify as cis. And so I do feel like it is my, my privilege and my duty to do the work, you know, yep. not be lazy. Just because yep. it doesn't affect me personally doesn't mean I shouldn't learn about it. Yeah, totally. My, well, do you want my takeaway, David? Um, no, no. bye. Oh! <laughs> no, please, please, come. <laughs> I am taking away that you don't respect me. Um, no, my thing would have to be, the keyword that comes up for me is granularity. It's that like, sometimes okay. we take too many things in the world at face value and we're not willing to look at the facets of them, like breaking them down into their parts, because by doing that, we actually understand the whole better. Uh, and I think that thing like the genderbred person uh, is a great example of that. So I think we just, we need to be willing to just dive deeper and accept things that are not, that aren't black and white. There's some gray and we got to break that gray apart. Hell yeah. I'm going to look up that uh, genderbred Grand person. You, oh, wait, what, what was the word you used? Granularity? Granularity. Granularity. Yeah. The word of Granules the day. Granules of sand. Granularity. Mm -hmm. Beautiful. So thanks again, Cassidy. Um, again, people can follow her at Cassidy A on Instagram. And uh, thank you so much for listening to Tissues of the Day. You can follow David at BitButton on Twitter and Instagram. You can follow Robert at Robert F. Mackay on Instagram as well. Stay wet, internet. Sobbing. <clears throat>